Hey, good evening, everybody. We're going to give people some a little bit of time to get in and Hope you guys have had a good day, good week. Can you guys hear me okay? Hello, Kimberly. Good to see you here. Yeah, I wish we wouldn't be in it. We weren't being. We were not in this situation that we're in right now, because, uh, yeah. Oh, you are working right now. Awesome. Um, I'm fine. I just wish we weren't in this situation because I had the I had the pavilion paid for, at Phelps Grove. And you know, for as many people as were uh, possibly going to show up. I mean, it would have been really cool if we could have been out there, but I don't want anybody getting sick. But Hello, Cassandra. So we're doing it here. We're doing it for people that can't get out and get around for a Beltane of themselves. So. Yeah, it would have been cool. We we had a pavilion set up, and the pavilion would have held uh, around 165 people. But uh, you know, with this situation going on, supposedly here in Springfield, if uh, the uh, if the if the thing kind of peters out a little bit, which I don't think it will, we we've, we've had our biggest jump so far today, as a matter of fact, in the state. So, but they were talking about. Um, supposedly trying to open the uh, parks back up between May 14th and the 22nd. But if this keeps going the way it's going, they're, they'll have the parks closed indefinitely. But that's why we can do things like this, you know. Because I wanted everybody that, you know, didn't have a chance to, you know, either the space or a place to do a ritual for themselves. So, here we are. And we're just going to hang out for a little bit. We're not going to do ritual just right away because, like I said, we're going to have time, fellowship, and everything, and uh, talk about some stuff, you know, before we do ritual. Um, for those that are at home, to kind of get in the mood, if you want to, put on some music. I would put on some music, but I have my AC on. Here in Springfield today, it's kind of hot, and that's why I'm trying to talk, but not talk too loud, because my neighbor upstairs is a jerk, and he calls the cops for no reason if he hears even a little bit of noise coming through his floor, so I have to kind of keep things down just a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's, it's nice. It's a beautiful day out there. It's 85 degrees, you know, which is kind of weird for this time of year, but this last... I mean, good God, the last seven or eight years here in, here in Missouri, basically, our weather and winter and all that kind of stuff has just been crazy. So we're doing this, and it would have been cool to see, you know, some of the little ones and stuff like that because there were a lot of parents 
<clears throat> that I had contact with that wanted to bring their kids. And we love kids. Beltane is perfect for kids and stuff. So it's like, yeah, it would have been great if we could have had some of the little ones with. But uh, if you have beverages and little things to snack on, get those out. Um, if you want to wear a robe. And there will be kind of things that I will make during the ritual that will be kind of directed towards towards you guys. I wish there was a way to connect more uh, video uh, uh, receptions or video connections through Facebook so that we could actually do like a real ritual with more than just me and stuff. So, Hey there, Richard. Good to have you aboard. But, uh, so this is one way. I mean, eventually, at the end of the year, I live in an apartment complex that I really, really hate. So hopefully, uh, with all this stuff going on and whatever, I'm going to eventually be able to move into a place that has a decent backyard and uh, have, you know, have my own privacy and a space to, you know, properly do ritual outside. And I'm still thinking that even then, if I get a decent place where I can probably do ritual outside, I'm thinking of trying to figure out some way to uh, rig up something that I could run into the house and do some kind of like a live stream of ritual and stuff like that. Because I've really enjoyed being, you know, able to come online for the last few weeks that we've been in this. This kind of helps me. Uh... Hey, Aaron. And, and as a matter of fact, speaking of Beltane, I just want to say that this lady right here, Aaron, has been, Aaron Collins, has been a, just a, a brace, a backboard, a support for a long time. Um, she was going to have the, uh, the fun and joy of um, uh, having some activities and things set up for the little ones. That's what I'm saying. I was glad that we were going to have little ones. But now that we're in this situation, it's like, you know. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Fire pit would be great. Here in town, you can't do that too much unless you're at somebody's house and then you can you can build it. But as far as some of the places that are like the larger parks for bigger ritual, the only way that you can really kind of do that is if you get a permit. Or you go to one of the, uh, there's one, I think, there, I think there's only one or two um, that actually have fire pits. And one of them's out by Nathaniel Green, and then there's another park here in town somewhere that has one. But because we're on lockdown and everything, so it's like, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that we can be a little bit more in control of things and stuff by Samhain because I mean that's the earliest that I could say that we might really start to get a handle on this but it's like and that's another thing you know we just got to be safe and everything you know so it's like uh, but like I say Erin's awesome I really appreciate her I'm glad that she's here and hopefully we'll have some more people start to show up here in just a little bit oh you're in Houston Awesome. I know where Houston is. My best friend's brother lives there. His wife was a teacher at one of the schools for a while, but uh, she had to retire or something. She's a, she's, uh, he's a, uh, works at one of the prisons not too far from Houston. And his wife is a deaf teacher. She's actually deaf. And she teaches uh, several different grade levels of, of learning disabled and, and deaf and, you know, non hearing students. And here, for some reason, last year, she ended up having to quit. I don't know if it was something health-wise or whatever. So, yes, Aaron, we do adapt. We try to adapt. Adaptation is what, you know, kind of makes us a little bit more accessible than some of the animals that are out there. But we do the best we can. And, yeah, and, uh, we've got, uh, oh, and speaking of Aaron and anybody that is a part of the Order of Standing Oak and those that are uh, part of the Missouri Druid School and stuff like that, just a little side note. Um, here last year, 
there was a time where I had um, gone and we had taken donations from various members of the order and had uh, I had gone and purchased some honey and uh, made a batch of mead. Well, that batch of mead was horrible. It was so bad that I ended up having to uh, ditch it and put it down the sink. Well, I took some money and I went and I redid another batch of mead. And I am happy to say to Aaron and anybody else that might be watching that put anything in for this, I'm bottling a batch of blueberry mead on Monday. Um, so there's people that put in for bottles, so everybody's going to get their bottles. And then what's left over, we're going to have eight bottles that will be used for rituals. And then the rest will be either drank by me or swapped to a friend of mine who's got some uh, pumpkin mead that is, oh God, it's just, it's so creamy and good. It's delicious. And then he's got this really uh, clear, uh, sparkly raspberry mead that he's had for 15 years in his refrigerator. And he's going to trade me some of those bottles, too. So, But yay, this batch, I know, isn't it great? That's the one thing I like about being pagan is we don't have to worry about going to the liquor store if we don't want to. We just brew our own stuff, make our own mead. All right, we're starting to get a few people in here. I hope you guys are having a good week. Um, that the little ones are, are have, haven't been driving you crazy. Um, and you know, it's kind of strange. Like I say, I've got the air condition on because it's like 85 and and for those that are listening now and have been in this apartment for ritual and stuff before it gets hot in here so I've had to turn on the air conditioner so if I'm if I'm a little bit soft just bear with me because of the fact I've got a cranky neighbor upstairs so but uh, yeah and it's like we've got, we're going to be doing ritual based on uh, uh, fairies at twilight for the last few years, we've been doing Beltane in the Park for, well, this would have been year number four. And it's like we've done ritual for uh, the ancestors and for the gods and for us and these different things. But for tonight, we're going to be making a different focus, which is for uh, the fairy realm. And what is kind of sad is <laughs> we had this uh, uh, person that... Um, recently contacted me through the uh, Missouri Druid School who was going to be playing our uh, May Queen, a, a fairy. And unfortunately, with being locked down here in the state of Missouri until Monday, surprisingly, um, she was going to be our May Queen. But um, not being able to have the uh, access to Phelps Grove Park, we're doing this. And so we, 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 we've got a pretty good ritual coming up. I think you guys will be, um, uh, you know, really uh, enjoyable of it. Um, next week, we're going to start back with classes again uh, and some other things. We're going to do some more juridic discussions and things like that. The oak leaves discussions that we did last uh, couple weeks back and stuff. So we've got a whole lot of things coming on. Um, we're going to go about another 10-15 minutes give some more people time to show up because I, I, there's some people that I know that wanted to get here and wanted to be a part of it and uh, but uh, so how's everybody doing how are you doing Aaron and I'm hoping MJ's here and I'm hoping that Alex and um uh, his husband or, or whatever can get here soon. Uh, it's been a crazy week. It's been a crazy week here where I live now. It's like we're getting slammed with uh, construction. And it's just so noisy every day. The only time you really get a break from it around here is on the weekends. So that's another reason. There's a lot of people that were doing rituals yesterday and things like that. But even here... They were doing cleanup and doing all kinds of noisy things, even still around 6 o'clock. So, that's why we're doing it today. But, uh, and then here coming up pretty soon, we're going to be having Midsummer. And with Midsummer, it, yeah, if it's going to be 85 this early in the year, 
I don't know if it would have been a good idea to do Midsummer in town. Now, what I would have liked to have done is find some place where we could have gone camping and done a nighttime ritual because it's a lot cooler at night. Uh, you know, just putting that out there. So eventually, keep your gear, keep your fingers crossed and put out lots of energy. And as time goes by, once we can get past a lot of this, we'll be able to start gathering together again. Because for everybody that's out there that knows me and has been in ritual with me before, I miss you guys. I miss being around people a lot. Believe me, this lockdown has been, to, to say the least, pretty stressful. But today's Beltane uh, for us, so uh, we've got a lot to be thankful for. We've got each other, got our health, we got our kids, um, and everything. So this is a celebration. That's that's what we do. Pagans are good at that. There's some things that you know that, that kind of put us out there ahead of the pack, and this is one of them. And that's why I love it. That's why I've been involved in pagan traditions since 1992, 93, something like that. Over th almost 30 years. So, okay. I'm thinking we've got a couple more that are going to be here in just a minute. I'm seeing people's things pop up on here. MJ, Mary Jo, are you here? If you are, shoot me a message on here. Here in a few minutes, we'll get started with everything. Here in a couple minutes, I'll get the altar moved over. And to everybody here that's an essential worker, I salute you. You guys have very, very uh, stressful jobs. And believe me, for everything that you guys do, we appreciate you. And for those of us that have uh, non-essential jobs or zero jobs or whatever, we appreciate you too, just as much as those that are out there doing the things that they're doing every day. Before I get ready to move everything around and stuff, can you guys hear me okay? I don't want to blow anybody out before I move things around. And if I kind of pause in the middle of rituals because I'm assessing whether or not my neighbor is going to be a jerk. But that's what you get when you live in close quarters with a bunch of different people that you don't know very well. So <laughs> I thank you for the thumbs up. You know what I'm talking about. One thing, though, uh, I know a lot of people that are taking advantage of this weather, uh, how nice it is and stuff, by starting gardens. And that's a good thing. I wish I had the ability to do that because, uh, you know, I know so many people with some really nice uh, home properties and things that are going to have some great. Um, our friend Helen and Dawn, they are just, oh, my gosh, they've got all their vegetables and, and flowers and things planted. They've got ducks and chickens and goats and bees and everything. And I can't do that just yet. Just yet. One day, my you know, my one of two things as a, as a druid, I want either one of two things. Either a, a, to live the rest of my life and die in Ireland, or B, hit the lottery, hit the lottery and... Um, find a place of like 120 acres 
with a nice farmhouse, place for ritual, maybe to do some little festivals, and the rest, just lots of vegetables and things like that. Just grow, have a tractor, kind of like Green Acres, do the whole farmstead thing. And actually in the area around here, outside of town, all the way around town out here, we have some decent properties. So maybe one day I'll hit that, but for right now, it's just a little bit out of reach. All right, just a few more minutes. I kind of got a timeline that I want to do, so I want it to get a little bit darker outside, too. Uh, we've got people from Houston, Missouri. We've got people from Tennessee. We've got people probably from all kinds of areas in the world. I know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so get your candles, get dressed and stuff, and here in a couple minutes, uh, we'll get this ritual started. I'm going to go ahead and move the altar, and I'll let you see uh, what is one of the prime things that's on it. This is our representation of the fairy folk, if I can get her without breaking her. This is something new that I acquired. i got to do this here real quick. Bum, bum, bum. She is the centerpiece for our altar. And the colors in her little stone there, they change. I love that. That is so cool. So I'm going to go ahead and put her back. Adjust that. All right. Uh, thank you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move this. Um, if you want to get something to drink, adult or otherwise, because there is going to be a point where we'll have a libation. But actually, we're going to have several libations in this. So if you want to participate in that way and uh, things like that, and then we'll go ahead and get this going. And I want to say I appreciate everybody. Oh, we've got about 40 people here. That's pretty decent. And if you got anybody that wants to, that you think would be cool to check this out, Message them here on Facebook and get them all on in here. And give me just a second and we'll get this started here.
All right, for everybody that's here, I want to welcome you to Belting 2020 here on Facebook, uh, hosted by the Order of San Diego in Missouri Druid School. And what we're going to do to get started for the ritual is we're going to close our eyes, take three big deep breaths, and we're going to chant the Awen, and then we'll continue on with the ritual. Ah. Ah. I would anoint you with the oil and the sign of the Awen. May the blessing of mind, body, and spirit be yours. I walk to the east. To the city of the Fae. By day and by night, the wind blows. Their gossamer wings flutter to and fro. In and out of the she mounds, all across Aaron. I walk to the south. Fires of Beltane are burning. The Fae, with great energy, see the humans at this time of fertility and joy. I walk to the west. Fairies and undyings of the watery realms and that city that gives us spiritual joy. Welcome. I walk to the north. The May Queen resides in the mounds of the earth. She comes out for joy is ours with our people on this building. To the All Father, the Dagda, to the Mother Danu, we ask that you be with us here to celebrate in joy and in harmony with the spirits of the land, with our loved ones and our families and our children, as we honor the Fae, the fairies at dusk, at twilight, as they join us to give us fertility, love, and joy. So do we toast for you. The spirits of place, animals, and the ancestors it is once again Beltane we are joined here together with family and friends, those that we love and that we care for. 
we ask that you join us here in this, our Beltane Rite, which was interrupted by a pandemic, but yet we are here together in peace and happiness and joy and in love. Thus do we toast you. May all manner of fame be welcome here this day, from the small to the tall, in the mound and beyond the mound, in the toadstool circles, in the groves and trees. This is our home, the earth, and we ask that as we prepare for the coming summer, the warmer months, that you would be mischievous and that you would bring mirth and joy and laughter to all of us that are here in this place and this time, and that our children would be happy and that they would play in, in joy and laughter. It's good to have kids laughter, and we need that right now. We need the joy that you can bring us. We take the egg that symbolize the fertility of the seamless cosmic universe. Direct your energy towards the cosmic egg, if you can, through the screen towards me. We will charge this with the love of our brothers, of our sisters, of ourselves, of the gods, and the Fae. And ask that the Fae would grace us with something that is personal to us that says, I am watching you. I am here to help you. The Fae are our helpers. They are the ancestors that have gone on, that have decided to come to the world to make themselves known to all of us. So we're just going to take a couple minutes here. And what I want you to do is think deep, wonderful thoughts, Beltane thoughts, sunny thoughts, happy thoughts. And in the back of your mind, think of how you would like to be how would you like to see your fertility increase in, in work, in love, in health, in a sound mind, in whatever way that you would see fit? Work up that energy. Let it build through your body. And as you will, send it forth to the egg, knowing that you are helping the world to grow, that you are helping your spirit to grow, that you are helping your loved ones to grow the plants and trees and animals that surround you build up that energy clap your hands stomp your feet do whatever you need to i would drum drums but once again my neighbor is a pain in the butt and whenever i say let go Send that Beltane love and energy of the Fae to the egg, and it will be stored for us to use as brothers and sisters in this pagan and druidic path. And I appreciate you all so much for coming. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Feel it building, feel it building, feel the heat of summer coming. Feel the joy of knowing that you're going to be able to fulfill your destiny and the things that you need to grow and to flourish and to give you joy and laughter are going to come to you. Send the energy now. Let it go. 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 
Thus have we charged the cosmic egg at Beltane. May it ever be strong and unbroken. And may it always keep us enclosed within inside of it. Our spirits within inside that cosmic egg. For those that are across the sea that are celebrating in Ireland and Scotland and Wales and various other places and that have existed in these places for many years, millennia even, we take the Ishkava, the waters of life, And we drink a toast to the ancestors of those that are in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, all of the places that the Druidic brethren hail from, and to all of you that are Druidic and pagan brethren here in the United States and around the world that may be watching this. This toast of Ishkava, the waters of life, are for you. Hail. For the ritual, we have a reading today. May the Awen flow. Stolen child, where dips the rocky highland of sleuth wood in the lake, there lies a leafy island where flapping herons wake, the drowsy water rats, there were hidden fairy rats, full of berries and of the reddest stolen cherries. Come away, O oh human child, to the waters and the wild, with fairy hand in hand, for those worlds more full of weeping than you can understand. Where the wave of moonlight glosses, the dim gray sands with light, far off by farthest rosses, we foot it all the night, weaving old and dances, till the moon has taken flight. To and fro we leap and chase the frothy bubbles, while the world is full of troubles and is anxious in its sleep. Come away, O oh human child, to the waters in the wild with a fairy hand in hand for the world's more full of weeping than you can understand where the wandering water gushes from the hills above glencore in pools among the rushes that scarce can bathe a star we seek for slumbering travel amid whispering in their ears give them unquiet dreams leaning softly out from ferns that drop their tears over the younger streams. Come away, O oh human child, to the water and the wild, with a fairy hand in hand, for the world's more full of weeping than you can understand. Away with us he's going, the solemn-eyed. He'll hear no more the lowing of the calves on the warm hillside or the kettle on the hob sing peace into her breast or see the brown mice bob round and round the oatmeal chest for he comes the human child to the waters in the wild with a fairy hand in hand from a world that's full of weeping that we can't understand one thing that i would recommend tonight Within the, within the next three days, because the energy of Beltane is starting to, to wane, is if you have a piece of paper or if you have some ribbon, that you would write a uh, something that you are wanting to see grow, something that you want fertile, uh, your garden, 
um, your kids' understanding of the subject at school, things that you need to, to, to become fertile in, and place them outside, hang them in a tree, hang them from a door, doorway outside, and an and entrance doorway would be very good. And whatever color you want, whatever color of ink you want to use, um, and just make those requests known. Because, unbeknownst to you, at some point in time, the Fae and the Fairy Queen will come to you in their way and help to give you what you desire. And if things get a little bit out of, out of whack or, or just not in, in the vein that, you know, we feel like we want, we don't feel like anything is quite going right, take the time and write something out on a, a ribbon or what have you. And, and continue to, to like, ask the Fae for help. Not just the gods. The gods are where they are, but the Fae are here to help us. They can be mischievous. Don't get me wrong. They will be mischievous in their own way. But that makes us, that makes us happy to see them the way that they are. It gives us joy and wonderment that to know that those beings that, that are out there in the forest and in the, in the toadstool rings, and those various places are, are here for a reason. Now, one thing before you do that, just remember, uh, don't over expect things from the faith because that's not nice. You know, don't go overboard because if you go too much, they'll kind of like go, eh, you're, you know, you're getting a little selfish because they aren't, you know, the faith are not necessarily always, uh, Beneficial. There are faith that if you go into a wrong direction, they will turn you around and face you the right way. So just be kind of uh, uh, mindful of that situation. Love your kids. Love each other. Take time for ritual. Take time for meditation that includes them. They like to be included. Um, make foods that are indicative of the fairies at this time of year salads, desserts, um, other dishes. There are so many, God, there's so many good pagan dishes that are being made out there. I couldn't begin to name all of them. But it's just, that's why this is called a practice. You know, instead of just, you know, doing Beltane one time a year like we do, make every day something akin to Beltane. We want to be fertile as much as we can. We want to have awe win, the inspiration that comes as the days grow longer and as the sun gets stronger and that heat that builds up, that's energy. Every day that you go out into the sun, soak some of that up so that whenever you come home in the evening and you do a meditation or you do a reading or you do whatever a ritual, you can add that energy to your, to the situation. And, uh, I've done that for a while now, and if you really look at it, you'll see that the fairy and the gods and the ancestors and everything like that are going to do their best to take care of you. Uh, a lot of people have asked me in the past, is there any type of faith within paganism? And I believe that there is, yes. That faith is expressed whenever we work magic. That faith is expressed whenever we do uh, you know, celebratory rituals such as Beltane and so forth, you know, it takes a matter of faith for us to come together and do this, to say that we would like the faith to be ever-present and moving in our lives the same way that the gods would. So, uh, the energy for today is just, it's so, and I feel the fairy. There's certain things, so keep an eye out for the next couple of days. You might see things in your yard. You might hear a song that reminds you of something on the ferry. Keep an ear out for that because those kind of things are ways that they can communicate with you. Also, you can do meditations of your own that would allow you to uh, communicate with them as well. And what we're going to do eventually is uh, uh, get into a thing where we talk about working with the Fae and things like that. So that's why we're doing this ritual today for Beltane this way, so that you guys can have another aspect of what we've done with the Order of Standing Oak 
since, well, this is year four, and I wish we could have done it with everybody outside, but, you know, we'll be okay. There's always next year. We've got more things where we can be together. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and kind of close things down. And we're going to give you a little bit of a chant. And then we'll come back at the end and uh, do the all-in chant and close things down. So what we're going to do is... Fur and feather and scale and skin. Different without, but the same within. Many a body, but one a soul. Through all creatures are the gods made whole. Fur and feather and scale and skin. Different without, but the same within. Many a body, but one a soul. Through all creatures are the gods made whole. Fur and feather and scale and skin, different without but the same within. Many a body but one a soul. Through all creatures are the gods made whole. <sighs> Berries of the North. Fairies of the South, Fairies of the West, Fairies of the East, and unto the Queen of the May, as druid folks, as bards, and as seekers of the old ways, we thank you for being with us today, from the altar to the ring. So be it. I'd like everybody to close your eyes, take three deep breaths, and with me, we will chant the all win to close out this Beltane ritual. Before we do that, thank you. I really appreciate it. And we'll go ahead and close this out. Oh. May the blessings of body, mind, and spirit be yours. All right, let me move this just out of the way for a minute. Oh, wow, almost 100 people. That is so cool. Oh, even with the air conditioner, it's still a little bit hot in here today. And the energy of Beltane is very, very, very high. Hey, there you are, MJ. Sorry I had to check everybody's messages. Oh. And afterwards, I salute you. This uh, beautiful chalice that we're drinking out of was uh, bequeathed to me by a very beautiful person. I love her to bits. Her name's MJ. I really appreciate this. And I'm going to have a drink. Whew. 
All right. But uh, ooh, let me get my uh, bearings here for a minute. Sometimes ritual energy can be very discombobulating for a little bit, you know, so you kind of got to get used to things. But I hope you enjoyed the ritual. I'm very pleased that everybody that wanted to got to show up. Um, we got a lot more things coming up, like I said, next week. We're going to start back with uh, Druid School Classes Online, uh, which we've got a bunch of stuff going on. And like I said, um, let's see, next week we'll be doing, classes will be on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. live here on Facebook. And our Druidic Discussions Oak Leaves will be on Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. So, Aaron, if you're not busy working or whatever, and you want to pop in, you know, and maybe add to the discussion or whatever, I'd love to have you, you too, MJ, and anybody else from the order that may be watching the stream. Um, it's great to have your support. You, these folks that have been around for so many years, I really appreciate you guys. It's like, uh, you know, you're the backbone of what keeps this going. And it's, it's something that I think Springfield really benefits from, you know. We've got so many different things going on, but I think this is one, one situation with us and the way that we've been doing things is just, you know, giving a, a, a different a different vibe and a different way of working paganism here in Springfield. We have so many different, you know, other groups that are wonderful and things. But it's also the good to be able to have people that are druidically inclined or at least Celtically inclined in some form or fashion. So it's like keep looking for it because we're going to be having more rituals. Uh, what we're going to start doing now also, I'm thinking as we start to get more into the summer, and what have you, we're going to start be doing some moon rituals. We will be doing full moons and new moons. Uh, we will be doing readings. Uh, I think that there will be a time that we will do some spirit workings. And for those that are interested, I would like to do uh, some trance that people would like to see what it is to actually uh, work into trance, if you've never done it before. Um, but we're going to do that. We've got a lot of things coming up. And I'm going to uh, uh, take and try to, what I'd like to do is, is if, if anybody's out there, we've been doing so many of these classes and stuff online. I'd like to see if there's somebody that I could maybe pay a flat fee to, uh, uh, what's the thing that you do whenever you transcribe, the transcription, transcript the episodes of either the rituals or any of the classes or any of the things. Um, some there are some certain uh, transcription companies that they blow the door off of you for prices. It's like I can't I can't go there. But what I want to do is take these and transcribe them for people that are wanting to you know have them accessible where they can read about the things because they might not be able to listen to them. And what I'm going to do is since I finally got a decent computer, we're doing this. But I'm also thinking. Uh, what do you guys think of actually having a podcast? Because I have Audacity. I have some sound, it, kind of sound equipment type things on the computer. And for those of you that don't know, for f four and a half years, I hosted a show on Blog Talk Radio called A Pagan Perspective. And matter of fact, this once we get done here, I'm going to take this video, work some magic with it, and put it up on Facebook. And I'm uh, not on Facebook, put it up on YouTube. And we have, I have a YouTube channel. And once again, that is a pagan perspective. Um, and we've got the last six classes on it. We've got videos that I've done on Druidry from years ago. And we're going to do that. And I'm going to see about getting a, uh, a more reliable and real pod system so that you guys could maybe catch it on Spotify and uh, some of the other Apple. Uh, Apple podcasting platforms and things like that. Since I basically, you know, as long as we're locked down, it's probably a good idea to be uh, uh, productive. And I think the next class that we're going to be talking about, uh, about is uh, we've done setting up your altar and things like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about this next class. It's going to be talking about the importance of trees to druids, trees in Celtic cosmology, the whole thing of why druids are uh, considered the oak wise, that whole thing. So the next class 
is going to be dealing with druids and trees. So this next Thursday at 7 p.m., I highly uh, recommend if you'd like to come check it out, hang out with me. Oh, and I've got the AC on and I'm still sweating. The energy, it's like, I don't know if anybody, if any of you have done really spot on personal ritual, but when you have that good energy flow, it's like your body vibrates. Like, like you're a beacon for the world to see, you know, so that's kind of like the way I am now. But I like that. I like the fact that we can take this time and celebrate together. I would have loved to have been able to see some of the little kids. What I wanted to do is like Aaron was going to be able to maybe uh, have some activities for the little children that for people that had brought their kids and stuff with. And I, I'm going to relegate this story. One of the first Beltanes that Aaron uh, was uh, involved in. Uh, working her her magic with the children, she did a thing where she had uh, uh, brought flower pots and let the little kids plant their own plants and and you know color on the the cups that they put their plants in and stuff. And it was just so cute. She had kids swarming around her. She was like the Pied Piper. It was so cool. But also in that same vein, after we had done ritual and the kids had gone back up the hill to you know, to work with Aaron and stuff. The next thing you know, I'm kind of like sitting there and cooling off after the ritual because that day it was, it was particularly warm. It was probably at least as warm as it is now. I look over and there's a swarm of kids coming over to me. And this one little boy just walks up to me and he goes, I like you. And him and his, th I think he had three or four sisters. I can't remember how many it was, but it's like they lined up <laughs> and they all gave me hugs. They just, I love you. And so it's like, I like that. I like the fact that we're we are a brotherhood. Pagans are a brotherhood, and it's like you know you've gone through putting together a good ritual and things like that. And Aaron's just up there. The little kids are loving it, you know, the painting and putting things together. And and, so, and Aaron's really good with that. I appreciate her so much for her efforts with the last uh, couple of uh, Beltanes in the park that she's worked with us. It's just like she's awesome. But she's up there. She's got the little kids going. And then the next thing you know, I'm being, you know, just love swarmed by these babies. And it's just awesome. So that's why that's why we're going to keep on doing this. You know, it's like a, a kind of like a sworn duty of a priest to spread as much love and joy within the tradition as possible. So that's what we're going to do here. So I want to thank everybody that's here. Kimberly, um, Cassandra, our friend from... Uh, uh, Tennessee, everybody. I don't know where everybody's from. Good God, we're like 120 people. That is so freaking cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this off here just a minute, let you guys go on about your rest of your Saturday evening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this uh, a, a Pagan Perspective on YouTube. And I encourage you to come check out the videos and su subscribe and that whole kind of thing. Um, also, if you're on Facebook and you're out there and you've never heard of our, our page here on uh, the Facebook tubes, then come and join us at Missouri Druid School. We have some wonderful people there. We've had new people coming in all the time talking about some really cool things. And it's like it's our it's our outreach arm to the to the world, the order of standing up. It's our ministry, it's to everybody. Excuse me, to know that Druidry is alive and it's vibrant and it's for the people, it's for our families, it's for our clans, it's for each other. So having said that, thank you, MJ, thank you, Aaron, thank you, Kimberly, thank you, everybody from the order that has watched today, and for everybody else, I love you guys. And from the altar to the ring, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. And if you want to contact me about anything, if you have any questions about the ritual or druidry or whatever just friend me and put a message in there and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so i love you guys i give you big hugs and kisses of the gods and the fae like i say work with them make them a part of your life and until this next thursday i will see you guys soon Bye bye